From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. President Biden suspends his 2024 re-election bid. I'm Skyler Henry in Washington as a wave of Democrats endorsed Vice President Harris as the top of the ticket. And this decision will have ripple effects on the entire election, and that includes the elections right here in Montana. We have more on what this may mean for our state. Kamala Harris for president. I'm Jared Hill with President Joe Biden's pick to be the Democratic nominee after his stunning decision to drop out of the presidential race. Coming up, what's next for the party? And we have updates to wildfires in and around our state. Already it is 6.01 on this Monday morning. Jane McDonald and Matt Owl with you. Little view near Brick Breed and Fieldhouse. And, yep. you know, unfortunately, that might just be the place where you want to do sports inside. <laughs> Trying to stay out of. Yeah, and the air quality hasn't uh, really gone uh, all the way down. But mm -hmm. you definitely notice and can feel that in the air. Right. Uh, something that we're going to continue to watch, mm -hmm. uh, especially as we're in the midst of wildfire season here. Temperatures into the 50s this morning. These cooler mornings will help us a lot. That brings up the humidity uh, with those cooler temperatures, and that's what you need for some of that recovery um, from fires or for fire fires and fuels. Uh, there are some outside chances, some pop up showers and thunderstorms, and I think that's going to turn more commonplace as we're moving into some hotter days here for the next few isolated thunder showers for are possible, especially west of the divide for today. Daytime highs near 90. It is hot, but the wind should remain light. I'm going to break down what you should expect for the next few days in just a few minutes. All right. Thank you very much, Matt. Now, right off the top, the Blacktail Canyon fire. That's the fire that's a few miles south of Butte has burned around 68 acres as of this morning. That's the most updated information that we have so far, according to reports. Fire officials say that hotshot crews continue to work that fire edge and crews say that the fire is burning in an area with lots of dead pine trees, which pose a threat as hot and dry conditions are expected for the next several days. Now, also that horse gulch fire that is east of Helena, that is almost 90% contained. Still a large fire, but that containment is going up, which is positive news for us. Now on the national scene, President Joe Biden, who for days has been battling COVID, announced Sunday he's ending his re-election bid. The move sent political shockwaves throughout the nation's capital as Bison also endorsed his vice president, Kamala Harris, to become the Democratic Party nominee. CBS's Skylar Henry reports from Washington with reactions and what happens next. This morning, Vice President Kamala Harris is picking up support. Just hours after President Biden announced he will no longer seek re-election, the president tweeted, It is in the best interest of my party and the country for me to stand down and focus solely on fulfilling my duties as president for the remainder of my term, adding his endorsement of Harris and urging the party to come together to beat former President Donald Trump. With Joe Biden as the heart and soul of our party and Kamala Harris coming out swinging, against this ticket, uh, we've got the recipe for victory. Harris says it is her intention to earn and win the nomination. Are you ready to make your voices heard? She's picked up endorsements from multiple labor organizations and party heavyweights like the Clintons. Vice President Harris is piling up support from members of Congress. The DNC says it will soon implement a framework to select a nominee. The process needs to be open to anyone else who thinks they can make a strong case that they can prevail in the battleground states, uh, and she'll be the stronger for the contest. Last night, Republican House Speaker Mike Johnson called on Biden to resign the presidency after bashing plans to replace him. It would be wrong and I think unlawful in, in accordance to some of these states' rules for a handful of people to go in a back room and switch it out because they're, they don't like the candidate any longer. President Biden has been isolating at his Delaware home after testing positive for COVID-19. He'll adjust the nation later this week. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Washington. And former President Donald Trump told CBS News the announcement of Biden's withdrawal came as a shock and he and his campaign have already begun attacks against Harris, tying her to the president's record. Meanwhile, there are several top Democrats who have not yet endorsed Harris, including former President Barack Obama. A person familiar with the matter tells CBS News he plans to wait until the nominee is official as he did back in 2020. Now, this decision will have ripple effects on the entire election, and that includes right here in Montana. With more on what this means for our state, here's Alina Howder.
If all of a sudden I show up at the convention, everybody says we want somebody else, that's the democratic process. It's a choice that many, like MSU Billings political science professor Paul Pope calls unprecedented. We've never seen this before. This is a game changer. It shakes everything up. With 15 years as a political scientist under his belt, even Pope didn't see this coming. He reached a point where his performance and his abilities were obviously be uh, problematic. Biden and the Clintons have endorsed Vice President Kamala Harris for the Democratic nomination, but it's still up in the air until the Democratic National Convention. She has a good record. Uh, she's polling well, so the chances are good for her. But again, it's no guarantee. Especially since Pope says Trump's base of voters has remained relatively stagnant. Anybody that the Democrats put up that's even a little bit more exciting than Biden, uh, more energy, that's going to hurt Trump. Every bit of that's going to be uh, uh, taking away from uh, Trump's ability to win this race. A decision that will have a direct impact on the races here in Montana. Who's on the ticket at the top, on the, uh, the presidential uh, ticket, uh, has an impact on the down ballot, the House, the Senate, governor's race, sometimes even legislatures. Just hypothetical here. Might be Republicans here that might vote for Republicans within the state, but then vote for whoever the Democrat president is because they don't like Trump or vice versa. But without an official Democratic nomination, things are still up in the air. I'm more worried about what happens if, the, if Trump loses uh, because he has a very large number of uh, supporters on his side that have very overtly threatened violence if he loses, you know, regardless of the election outcomes. In Billings, Alina Howder, MTN News. And soon after President Biden announced he was dropping out of the presidential race, Montana's Democratic Senator John Tester, who just days ago called on Biden to step away, said, quote, I respect President Biden's decision and believe it is the right thing to do for our country. Charlotte and I thank him for his lifetime of public service and dedication to our great nation. Republican Senator Steve Daines released a statement saying, quote, if Joe Biden is no longer capable of running for re-election, he is no longer capable of serving as president. It is out of concern for our country's national security that I am formally calling on President Biden to resign from office. Congressman Zinke said, quote, President Biden's decision not to seek re-election was the right move, albeit far too late. And this morning, a new spotlight on Vice President Kamala Harris, now officially endorsed by President Joe Biden, following his stunning decision to drop out of the 2024 race. CBS's Jared Hill has a look at Harris's political rise, role in Biden's White House, and possible picks for her vice president. I solemnly swear. I, Kamala Davy Harris, I solemnly swear. Vice President Kamala Harris poised to make history once again, endorsed by President Joe Biden as his pick to replace him come November. Are you ready to make your voices heard? The 59-year-old went from prosecutor to California Attorney General, then Senator in 2016, before making her first bid for the White House, later tapped by Joe Biden as his running mate. As vice president, she's been tasked with leading the administration's efforts to address migration at the southern border, making her a top target for Republicans. Also leading the administration's charge on reproductive rights. Now swing state voters are reacting to news she could be the party's Democratic nominee. I think people don't realize how strong she is, and I think she's uh, come a long way in the last couple of years. I don't know if people have been like, thinking about her in that way, so yeah, it's hard to say. Um, and I guess it would depend who she chose as her running mate. Harris, who has a more liberal voting record, could be balanced by a more centrist VP pick. Names have started to swirl, including swing state governors like North Carolina's Roy Cooper, Josh Shapiro of Pennsylvania, and Andy Bashir of Kentucky, whose sources say she spoke with on the phone Sunday. You want to have someone uh, who knows how to govern, who could step into the job. But Harris's official nomination is not yet a done deal, with Democratic delegates set to vote ahead of the party convention next month. Jared Hill, CBS News. And Vice President Harris is scheduled to campaign in Wisconsin, Indiana, and Massachusetts later this week. Now, back in some Treasure State headlines, friends are coming to grip with a tragic reality. 20-year-old Dylan Honlin, a Montana State student from Minnesota, was hiking the East Rosebud Trail on Friday, July 12th, when he slipped and disappeared into the rapids. 
Red Lodge rescue crews have been diligently searching the area, and despite not finding his body, they now believe his injuries to be fatal. This morning, our Charlie Kleps spoke with close friends of Honnell who are devastated by what happened. It was just sad, you know, he's out, he's been on my mind every day. The tragedy has been hard to stomach. He was just uh, a great person and, um, you know, it's sad that he's not here anymore. On July 12th, 20 year old Dylan Honnell slipped off of a log and into this water and hasn't been seen since. A lot of people are sharing, you know, things about him. I think he uh, touched a lot more people's lives than he realized. Red Lodge Rescue is now saying they believe the accident to be fatal. Devastating news for friends and family like Lennon McLean. He was always a super kind soul, um, always positive, probably the most positive person there. McLean says the news was difficult to hear, knowing the impact he had on so many, but that it was nice knowing he was enjoying the outdoors up until the end. You know, I know he was always out, outdoors and stuff and enjoyed that. It just kind of puts into perspective that it's always a possibility. and. Nothing's positive about it, but it is positive that he was doing something that he loved and enjoyed. Red Lodge Rescue is still searching for Honnell, but with every day, it's beginning to look more and more like a recovery. Not the way he deserved to go. A nightmare for all that knew him, who say they'll cherish his memory forever. He always felt or made people feel uh, comfortable and wanted, and I don't think the thought of him will ever go away because I had great experiences with him and um, you know, I, I feel for his family. In East Rosebud, Charlie Kleps, MTN News. And a grizzly bear was shot and killed Thursday after breaking into homes in and around Gardner. According to Fish, Wildlife and Parks, the bear had been reported in garbage and breaking into homes not only in the Gardner area, but also in employee housing at Mammoth Hot Springs and in the Maiden Basin area, where it was ultimately killed. FWP says the 15-year-old male was healthy, so the availability of human food was what ultimately led to his being euthanized. Typically, we, you know, we would expect that uh, with a bear that's at the end of their life or has worn down teeth or some other kind of issue going on, but that was not the case for this bear. Uh, this bear should have easily been able to make a living uh, in the wild, um, but it was just the availability of the attractants that brought it there. Jacobson says FWP is working with landowners in the Gardner area to try to remove bear attractants, but says this incident highlights the need to continue those efforts. And of course, not just in the Gardner area, but anywhere really west yeah, of Billings. I mean, it's bear country. It's all bear country right mm -hmm. now, yep. Yeah, so I mean, it doesn't take too much forethought. Just be aware, be bear aware, get that education. Yeah, and those that areas way. like Gardner and West Yellowstone, they're pretty used to it already. Yeah, exactly so. right. So that way we can try to avoid some of that euthanasia out there for some of our grizzly and black bears. Now, before we head into a break, wanted to share this with you. We're going to head over to a fire department, but thankfully we are going to take a break from talking all about those wildfires. Now, if you look really carefully, what we got going on they're there? working on a muffler. Something was stuck in there, Aww. and that was brought to their attention. And that thing was a little Aww, kitten. Look at that little cute thing. The head stuck, but boop, able there to get him out, thankfully. I mean, the precision and the patience of the Howell Area Fire Department that yeah. <laughs> they had to exhibit. You need a new muffler, but that's all right. Oh, well, maybe the kitten can can chip in and yeah, help with I'm that. Sure. Yeah, I think Aww. she'll be she'll be quite pleased. But you know, thankfully able to get rescued from that kind of delicate, tricky situation there. Glad so they were able to help out. It all ended. It all ended well. So we can be yeah. thankful for that <laughs> over there. Now we're going to take a short break here in Montana this morning. But when we come back, well, congressional hearings on security measures during the attempted assassination on former President Trump are set for today. Our Megan Elaine spoke with a Bozeman resident who has a special insight into how a president is to be protected.